Microsoft wouldn't allow that to have allow the game to extend to a point where your lineup is actually going to shine. They will just finish you off at a specific timing, and you won't have a window to showcase your late game. So I feel that is one of the things that we saw from LGD. Sometimes they could overthink that we need stronger late game and we need stronger late game and they forget that oh, our lanes and early game are actually as important as that and they just give away a timing window towards the enemy to finish the game early. All right, Ben, what are your thoughts about OGD? Yeah, it seems like they they think that they're very confident in their late game and they develop pretty strong lanes, but that mid window, which Secret took advantage of mm -hmm. in game number one, is just like, oh, wow, we didn't expect you to uh, push that early. And if you can execute it well, you can just cut off their head right there. And, you know, they had a lot of ways. They have, like, you know, kinetic field, fissure. They could have delayed the push, but it just seems like if you catch them right off guard at that particular moment, you can just win. And All right. I, I, we didn't see the LGD IG game, but IG actually took a game. That's true. First LGD. That is true. I'm not exactly sure how that game went down, though. Yeah, that's true. So LGD, of course, they have that one tie with IG. And again, tying with Secret, so both of them moving on. Tied for 11 points in first place, but... A lot of people saying, all right, well, LGD, their day ones and day twos weren't exactly the hardest. We'll have to see when they play secret. Now they're tied. I think most people have to be convinced by now. Okay, there's a reason why a lot of people were rating LGD so high, maybe even top three, top two of TI5. And that's good news because we get to watch LGD again in our second match coming up here on the mainstream. However, they are going to have to play against Navi, who is still in their previous match against Fnatic. So right now, after taking a look at the standings real quick, we will jump into that game, see how Navi's doing, and then we'll get a better picture of how that matchup happens in match two uh, here on the mainstream. But yeah, as you can see now, with a 3-2-0 record for both LGD and Secret in Group A, still leading strong. So the next matches continue to matter quite a bit for both of those two teams in securing that first seed for Group A. And the rest of the lineups, of course, we will find out in the later half of the day, especially for Group B, if anything kind of changes for the middle of the pack there with VP, Vici, and even Empire. Can they climb back up? They are having some trouble so far in TI5. So for now, let's jump into the Na'Vi versus Fnatic game, see how they're doing, see how they end up in Game 2. They had a dominating performance in Game 1, and then we'll get to find out how they do against LGD afterwards. Well, I'm just sitting here. Yeah. Because again, the Naga Siren's going to be sending illusions to other lanes, sure. It happens, you know. That, that's just how the hero actually functions, but... By the way, welcome in to everyone tuning in. We're now on the mainstream here. And I guess we're, we must be the last game running, right? It must be. I, and this yeah. game could be running for quite a bit more if Na'Vi able to get it their way. If you're just joining, this is a game in which Suneko is on his Naga and has managed to find a hell of a lot of farm. He said, Havorst, I'm going to carry today. He's got a Radiance Manta style complete now as well on top of the Octarine 45 minutes in. We've seen Fnatic have a couple of really nice team fights in which they've been able to get themselves into the base now, but KYX way oh, the getting glimmer. X'd up in the glimmer indeed from Fnatic. Able to get himself back out. So they're slowly chipping away at the base. It's just the ranged racks. But still, look at the other lanes. I mean, they're going to have to send someone down to deal with this creep wave here. And Seneco on the back of this. He's really holding Na'Vi in on this game. With the amount of pressure he's applying to the lanes. And uh, it's a lot of this, it just feels a lot of pressure is on Seneco at this point. It's kind of all on him, actually. If he gets picked off one more time, he still has, what, right now he's not able to buy back for three minutes. He'll have enough money when the buyback cooldown is back up, but for a while, Navi, they need to continually push out lanes. That is their only game plan. When they went mid trying to fight because they knew Roshan was going to spawn, they had the right mentality about wanting to fight over Roshan. That part was fine, but they just didn't respect Fnatic's 5 versus 5 potential enough. I mean, if we're, if we're speaking bluntly, Fnatic's 5 man is insane. Like, they're actually so good in 5 versus 5 engagements, especially considering the amount of mobility that their cores have. And we said, even at the start, Navi, they lack Disable. They're not able to really hold the Storm in place. They can't deal with Mushi. So when you take that 5 versus 5 and you Song aggressively, you leave yourself no retreat option. And then Fnatic just run them over. So I think that decision in of itself has kind of put them into this this spot right now where Seneco is just being completely relied on to keep them in the game. I mean, if you do look at the lockdown that Na'Vi have, essentially they've got the three seconds at the waning rift, the three and a half seconds of the hex, and then it is down pretty much to the snowball stun as well. But even in those, what, kind of six, seven seconds, if you perfectly kind of stagger them, uh, stagger the lockdown, I don't know if they're killing this uh, this storm because he's pretty darn fat. You know, 2,300 health. To... And there's, there's a, a freaking goddamn undying keeping him alive yeah. with everything that he's got in his items. There's a ton of heals, there's yeah. glimmer capes, there's solar crest, four staffs. Seven seconds sounds like a really long time, but in reality, trying to line those things up together yeah. without the enemy team doing anything to stop you is very unlikely. So in, in the grand scheme of things, they don't really have a lot 
to deal with KYXY at this point. And he is sitting on top of 5,600 gold, likely going to be seeing him pick up that hex. He might even buy it and just say, screw having buyback, because right now, Fnatic are still pressuring a lot, and he's got a lot of Bloodstone charges, so even if he does die, he'll be respawning relatively quick. Yeah, the man with the 13 is going to be swimming around about 20 second, 20, 30 maximum respawn. It's not going to be a big one. Yeah, it's all. not bad. Yeah. But, I mean, as well in these fights, we've been seeing the Blood Rage being used on KOXY, so he's doing a hell of a lot of damage zipping around. They're really not scared of him, him dropping, because they know that they can keep the Storm alive. Na'Vi here. Just ready, and they're waiting for Fnatic. It's very hard for Na'Vi now to leave the base. In fact, I don't think we've seen anyone other than Seneco dare to leave. And same time, Kessig, he's got the BKB now on his Crystal Maiden as well. Level 16 here with a third point in Freezing Field. Na'Vi have got to be so scared of these 5-on-5 five -five engagements. At least they have a couple of ways of stopping the LT still. Like, when they had that CM ult mid, that was kind of the thing that sealed the deal. Like, Kessick standing in the trees, getting that huge freezing field off, killing, I think, two or three members of Na'Vi, just in terms of sheer damage output. That was a huge play. They can Walrus Punch, I think, to stop Black King Bar, or BKB ulti, and then they also have the um, yeah. the Naga, Naga Net. That's pretty much the only two ways. So looking for him to try to get some big ultis off. Fnatic, though, they're not going too crazy right now. They're kind of just content to control the map, farm it up, they're going to see that uh, teleport from Seneco. Actually, no, he might have been on a vision when he did that. But if they see him teleport to a lane, they immediately have to pressure because you want to always push the Naga Siren back into her base. The longer you can keep her confined in there, the less likely it is that you're going to have lanes being pushed like all the way to your base. And you can see what he's doing. Like He's actually just running his illusions past creep waves. He's not trying to sit there and tank him out. He's just putting him in front of the tier 2 and like parking it there and just trying to get the lanes out as far as he can. Naga doing Naga things here on all the lanes. He did pick up the Diffuser Blade as well. But, uh, it's going to be very nice in the fighting and in the pushing. Also, bottom lane going in on to this tier 3 KYXY zipping forward. And oh, Havorst, yeah, just, just chilling about here. Havorst in terms of farm on top of the AC now. Does have 2,400. But yeah, these illusions. They're sitting there tanking up the tower as well. Why not? I, that's going to be a creep wave going down the amount of farm that this Naga's got, allowing him to achieve this. And you're going to have to send someone back on the side of Fnatic because you've got a couple of siege creeps that are going to be knocking on your door. And indeed, KOX there, KOX were there with the TP back. And, it's, oh man, this, this game, it's we could be in for the long haul, Andy, with this one. It is possible. It I mean, it's possible. 50 minutes yeah. for a Naga Siren game that is not long by any stretch of the That's imagination. The park. We've seen like two-hour games, something like that with Naga Sirens before in the past. But Roshan going to be the next point of contention. Again, forcing KYXY out is the big deal. It means Na'Vi can get themselves going on the map. They know Roshan's going to be up soon. Funix scouts the pit. He sees it. It's not up just yet, but they know. That's why they're going for the smoke play. I really hope they at least save Song to run away this time, because if they didn't learn their lesson from what they did mid before, it could be Fnatic just taking another really strong fight. Yeah, smoked up at the moment, Na'Vi. Seeing what they can find. And as you said, this will be a lovely time to try and catch up Fnatic, because... Other than now, Na'Vi haven't really left the base here, so it would really catch Fnatic off guard. But it is not going to be the case. Fnatic themselves grouped up towards the mid lane. And I'm just kind of having a look. There is no gem at the moment on the side of Na'Vi. We do have a gem on the side of Fnatic, though, of course, Kessick holding it on the CM. And Seneca just continue to push out. Has found 4,100 net worth now as well. And he is catching up here with KYXY Stormfine. There's going to be a bit of a fight kicking off though here. Kessie, he tries for the freezing field, but the Warriors Punch is there to cancel it. And they do lose the Crystal Maiden. At the same time, KYXY looking for Art Style. Danny's there to back it up. KYXY, will he be able to find the kill? No, Art Style with the Shallow Grey. KYXY is going to have to get himself the hell out of there. Doesn't want to fight it. Actually going to join the rest of the gang looking for Seneco. Seneco, he's got the TP. Will be able to disengage this time with the Song of the Siren. They're giving away Roche. Like, that, that TP basically just says, we cannot fight Roche anymore. I'm really surprised that after getting that CM kill, they didn't just try to go for that. And the funny part about it, too, was KYXY had Orchid that entire time. He just let Art Style use Grave. Like, he had Orchid off cooldown and just didn't go for the kill. That is a really bizarre kind of exchange, I guess, from both teams. But Seneko teleporting himself top. He's going to just shove the wave in again, trying to prevent the push in mid. And maybe because of the lane equilibrium right now, Na'Vi aren't actually giving away Roche because now Fnatic have to de-push again. Like, they're feeling not as confident. Like, maybe they don't kill it fast enough and Na'Vi would be able to react in time. So, definitely a very stressful situation for both teams. 
And this is still anyone's game, right? Like, if Fnatic win one good team fight or they're able to get Roshan, that might be enough to help them break high ground. I think if Na'Vi somehow manage to get Roshan, Fnatic are going to be in a really, really bad place. It's, it's getting harder and harder against this. This Naga Sarin, the courier going out to the secret shop. What's going to be the item of choice here for Seneko? Does he go for the butterfly or the... Uh, it's going to be the butterfly straight up purchased as well. So that means there's no buyback available for Seneko here, going all in with the butterfly purchase. He's really tanky, though. So he has 24 armor, evasion, and 2100 health. His illusions are going to be absolute monsters at this point. Even trying to kill those in general, it's going to be tough. Fnatic with the smoke, just trying to scout out the Roshan pit. They see it's up. Here we go, Zip zapping straight on to Funny Kid with a Hex, but now with the return Hex, they're trying to do it for the low ground. Dendi there controlling KYXY. Artstyle is the one that might be in a lot of trouble. There we go, the Orchid this time, but the song coming out is not quick enough to save Artstyle. Artstyle will fall, the rest of Na'Vi getting themselves back up to the high ground. They're going to be all right, 38 seconds until Artstyle returns. Ah, he could have gone a lot worse for Na'Vi that one, they do just lose the Dazzle, but the big kind of punishment here for them is the fact that Fnatic are going to be able to take Roche off the back of it, and there's nothing that Na'Vi can do to fight this. Oh, they've got a Hex now on the Undying as well. Ohio is just like, he's like, whatever, just casual Undying, 6-1 and 11. At 53 minutes, this is actually an insane amount of items for an Undying to have. And the Hex is so good. Like, double Hex, you initiate with a Storm, you Hex, then you get the pull. you can go for the Orchid as well if Manta Style is down on Seneko, and then you can just go into another Hex. They actually have more than enough to be able to deal with this Naga Siren inside a fight. So for now, having the Aegis Fnatic, they want to be aggressive. They want to control. They want to force Seneko to come back to base. Uh, Mushi at the moment in the mid lane on his Bloodseeker. Just look at Mushi as well. He is incredibly stacked. He's got a Butterfly. He's got the MKB. He's got everything that he needs. He's also holding the cheese at the moment. So when he does turn up to the fights, he's just going to be something else that Na'Vi are really going to have to worry about. We haven't really seen him in full force in these last couple of engagements. But when he does turn up, the uh, difficulty for Na'Vi is certainly going to be stepped up. Seneko, indeed, just continuing to pressure this top lane. Hasn't been able to do too much damage to the Tier 3, but he's going to be able to skip out the creeps in the middle as well. Mushi trying to do what he can, really, to deal with it. He's kind of been left on his own to defend the base. The rest of Fnatic hanging around here on this bottom lane, which is kind of where we've seen them sitting for, uh, for around the last 20 minutes. They always come back to this spot. They really want to try and break this area of the map. But each and every time, they're still yet to take down the Tier 3. Na'Vi have been pretty strong with the defense. It's just really hard to, to fully commit when you're in the situation, right? Because what if Fnatic make a mistake? What if they fail this high ground push with an Aegis? That means that you're going to have to wait minimum for the next Roshan to spawn. And by that point, it might already be too late. You can see Seneko, he still hasn't even felt pressured enough to teleport to base. He's saying, yeah, it's fine. I'll just sit up here, pop my mantle on cooldown, throw some mirror images at the tower. Like, this Tier 3 top lane is taking more damage than the bottom Tier 3 that Na'Vi are being pushed in by right now. So, it's a little bit concerning. Oh, they're going to go in straight away with the Hex onto Havorce. They want to try and find it, but he's going to be fine. They're actually backing up because the Hex now to KO XY. We'll be able to get the BKB out, looking for the kill onto Funny, pulling him in, but they are hard. The Snowball there just in time, along with the Shallow Grave, and now it's going to be Fnatic getting themselves the hell out. Snowball chasing down KO XY with a stun catch. No, he's able to just duke it out, but now with the ensnare. Seneko's turned up to the fight here. KO XY will get Glimmer Cake Top. He's going to be fine for the time being because Na'Vi backing themselves back up to the base. And now KO XY, he's looking for blood. He just goes straight in there. He is not scared at all. He knows that they cannot kill this storm. There's a freezing field here, because why the hell not? It looks pretty there from Kessikimba. Mushi continues to go, and now KOXY with the Hex onto Dendi. Shiva's guard as well. Can they bail it with Mushi's damage? Arstar just in time here with the Shallow Grave. Dendi needs to get himself out. Can't go down. They've already lost Funnick here on the side of Na'Vi. Now with the Hex onto KOXY. Buyback from Funnick here. And now Seneko going in. Can he clean this one? Is he the carry that Na'Vi needed at this point in time? Kessik's able to retreat himself out. Johnny getting 